Now at noon, four shootings in less than two months, leaving residents wondering what is happening in the capital city and the community now opening their ears and doors to police chief Michael DeLeo in hopes of finding out some solutions and more from the Wakulla murder trial of Andrew Wilson. WTXL ABC 27 News at noon starts right now. Live from the WTXL studios, this is ABC 27's News at Noon. Officers from Tallahassee Police Department now involved in a fourth shooting here in Tallahassee within just the past two months, causing an outcry from the community now. Leaders now asking what can be done to combat the problem. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here on the news at noon. I'm Greg Angel. Kelly is off. Here's the latest shooting around 3 o'clock this morning. An officer responded here to the area of Joe Lewis Street when officers say a man was exiting a wooded area near Volusia Street. Authorities say the officer became suspicious and started to approach the guy. That's when he took off. And then in that escape, he turned around, started firing a gun towards the officer. Officer. The officer then returned fire. Now the suspect was taken to an area hospital with minor injuries, though it's still unclear whether or not those injuries were from this morning's incident or another incident. That officer, by the way, per department policy, has been placed on administrative leave. Now, oddly enough, this is not the first police involved shooting in recent weeks. If you've been following the news here lately, there have been several other instances when an officer has used deadly force. The first shooting you see here on the map, Copeland and Call Street, right here near Florida State University's campus. This is where Tommy Jackson was killed after a police uh, chase resulting from a suspected burglary. Arthur James was also shot but was treated for his injuries. He, by the way, is now in the Leon County Jail. Let's take you here to the second location happening last month. 18 year old Dwayne Strong right here. 2394 West Tennessee Street, uh, Tennessee Street. This is at Cheeks Nightclub. Officers say they were patrolling the area when they heard shots being fired and when they arrived, Strong attempted to leave the scene in his Dodge Charger, nearly ran down an officer in the process. Officers fired their weapons. Strong then crashed his car and later Strong died at an area hospital. Then four days ago, Club Pierre right here on Orange Avenue. 24 year old Jacoby Hart shot during his arrest. Police returning fire after Hart started firing several shots. Two officers also placed on administrative leave in this case. In so many shootings, the community now searching for solutions. Officers, it seems, constantly now in harm's way. Later tonight, Tallahassee Police Chief Michael DeLeo is going to be speaking at a town hall meeting to address some of these recent shootings. Chief DeLeo says that the gun violence in the city has been very high, resulting in this increase in cases involving officers. Now, the police chief says they responded to about five shootings per week, and now he says the department won't comment on any of these specific cases until they go through that grand jury process. One of those coming up here in just about another week or so. Now the first two are set again for June 23rd. Now that town hall meeting with the Chief DeLeo is going to be happening tonight, 6 p.m. at New Birth Tabernacle Church. That is on Harlem Street. That is happening at 6 p.m. tonight. We, of course, will be there. And we'll have continuing coverage for you tonight on WTXL.TV and beginning on the news at 5. Some other news here at noon. A murder trial continuing today in Wakulla County, where a man is accused of killing two people and attempting to murder one other. Andrew Wilson could face the death penalty for the March 2011 attempted murder of his then estranged girlfriend Gabrielle McKenzie and the stabbing deaths of her father John McKenzie and her then new boyfriend Patrick Pittman. Gabrielle herself testified on Wednesday detailing the relationship with which she and Wilson has. They also, by the way, share a son. She told the jurors that Wilson had become more possessive when she got pregnant and that she eventually got a domestic injunction a month before those deadly attacks. Prosecutors told jurors that Wilson planned the attacks and used plastic bags and electrical tape to cover his feet, to cover his footprints. They also heard some of the gruesome details of the case, including Pittman being stabbed 47 times. Jurors also hearing those chilling 911 calls in the case. There were two made, one by Gabrielle, but the first one, made by Patrick Pittman himself. Take a listen.
That voice you hear in that 911 call, prosecutors say, is Patrick Pittman. You can hear him tell the dispatcher, quote, I'm dying. Andy Wilson is trying to kill me. You have to hurry. Defense attorney Andy Thomas told jurors on Wednesday that Andrew Wilson acted out of emotion and a depraved mind, not out of deliberate and a planned attack. We'll have more for you on today's testimony coming up tonight on the News at 5. Turning out to Live Oak, the city council president calling for the fire chief to be fired. He says Chief Chad Croft has violated city policy several times and also accuses him of improper conduct. Swanee County Democrat reporting Croft says, though, this is retaliation by the city council president because he's actually facing an ethics violation. A Perry man now charged with animal cruelty after he dragged his two dogs on leash behind his vehicle. Emery Jenkins, who you see here, arrested and taken to the county jail after someone called the incident in. Man had tied the leashes of his chocolate lab in Tan Collie to his vehicle and drove for several miles. He told officers he was taking his dogs for a run. Leashes he used, though, were just three feet long. Jenkins says he didn't use longer leashes because he didn't want them to get run over by another vehicle. Right now, one dog is in stable condition, the other in fair condition. A Dollar General truck overturned westbound Highway 10, Interstate 10 this morning, just after uh, you get on the freeway at Capitol Circle. Uh, according to the tow truck driver, the Dollar General truck most likely slammed into a guardrail and then flipped over. All this happening at around 145 this morning. A driver was taken to the hospital. Now, there were no road closures or traffic jams because of how early it happened, but they can't move the truck until everything in the Dollar General store is emptied out in the in the truck there. All right, well, weekend is almost here ever so close. Michelle, you've been talking about rain, but we're hoping for at least that nice hot pool kind of weekend. I've been telling you, get out early, early in the day, and that's pretty much when you have your best shot at missing and dodging some of those showers. Take a look at some temperatures across the region right now because we are soaring, and these are just actual temperatures, and we are starting to see an increase in cloud coverage. We have mostly cloudy skies all the way from Tallahassee, Thomasville, and Valdosta, starting to see them in the upper 80s and even 90 in Valdosta, but the heat indices are already making it feel like it's in the mid-90s across some places. We are also starting to see with that cloud coverage a few pop up showers as I mentioned and we have that 30% chance of rain mostly around our coastal areas 20% as we work our way inland across South Georgia there for today and we have the chance to see a few more isolated thunderstorms pop up but look at the actual temperatures Bainbridge shooting up to 91 degrees right now we already saw Valdosta is at 90 88 for Homerville Live Oak you're sitting at 86 and 82 for Perry so heading throughout the rest of the day this is what we're going to see around 5 o'clock you'll definitely see more widespread scattered showers and a few more isolated instances with those thunderstorms and some of them could have locally heavier rainfall with them still shooting up to 94 degrees. You add the heat index and it makes it feel like it's in the upper 90s. So try to find a way to stay cool. Even around 10 o'clock tonight, those showers will diminish, but will still be in the lower 80s. I'll give you the full forecast coming up in just a few moments, Greg. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Election season already getting underway in Tallahassee City Commissioner Andrew Gillum has now officially qualified for the race for mayor. Now, he may actually be the only one. So far, it looks like Gillum is going to be running unopposed for the mayor's spot. Now, as for Gillum's seat on the commission, several hopefuls are looking to fill the seat, including Curtis Richardson, who qualified yesterday. Meanwhile, both commissioners, Nancy Miller and Gil Ziffer, appear to be running unopposed for in their bids for re-election. On the Leon County side, Commissioner Christian Dozier and Nick Maddox both running unopposed. However, Leon County Commissioner Bill Proctor is being challenged in his race for re-election. Now, things could be changing very quickly. The deadline to file the paperwork is tomorrow. Candidates who run unopposed will be automatically elected or re-elected when the qualifying period ends. Our political contributor, Tramel Gomes, is going to be joining us live later tonight to break all the details down for us. That's starting tonight on the news at 5.30. City of Tallahassee stepping up in a big way to help homeless children here in our community. There are more than 550 homeless children in the Tallahassee area. That's nearly 20% of the city's total homeless population. That number 
is only continuing to grow. However, residents and city leaders trying to do something about it. All through the Change for Change program adopted by the commission in 2004, it allows citizens to make monthly contributions on their utility bill, and the money is being used to provide basic needs and emergency services to help the homeless. For more information, you can visit the city's website, talgov.com. More details up on our website for you, WTXL.tv. As the news at noon continues here, Harry Potter fans have another reason to rejoice. Orlando, Universal Orlando, now offering a new adventure for Potterheads. Plus, the mom of the U.S. Marine jailed in Mexico now speaking out. Find out why she wants her son released now.